you speak of the of the uh, case in uh, in Australia. Yeah. Well, in Australia, there was a man uh, who uh, it's claimed infected three women, and I think one woman died. And the defense of the man, uh, I don't know if the, I don't know the details if he did it deliberate, if he knew. I don't want to get into that and what the punishment should be. But the question is, is his defense was an absurdity, but uh, that the virus uh, didn't exist. The biggest problem with the HIV theory of AIDS is HIV. There is a group of AIDS denialists that say that HIV does not exist and has never been isolated, and which is <laughs> as bizarre as it gets. You and your colleagues not only state that HIV does not cause AIDS, but you take an even greater leap and say HIV does not exist. Is that correct? Oh, it is partly correct. We do not say that HIV doesn't exist. It may exist. But the presently available data does not prove its existence. But how can you say that when world-renowned scientists like Dr. Gallo and Dr. Fauci say HIV does exist? Are you telling me and the world that they're all wrong? No, what, I, what we're saying is there is the evidence there, the data in the scientific literature, which is published. Scientists interpret data differently, and we interpret the evidence one way, and they interpret it in a different way. So, in our view, the evidence does not prove the existence of HIV. We've all seen pictures. We've seen electron micrographs of HIV. How can you say something that we see isn't there? You didn't see electromicrograph of HIV. What we see is electromicrograph of particles which look like retroviruses. But uh, it's one thing to look like and another thing is to be a virus. The one thing I don't understand is how can you question the existence of a virus when there was an international lawsuit against the United States government and Robert Gallo for stealing the French virus? I mean, it seems to me there must be a virus there if somebody stole it. That's the problem. Under no circumstances, uh, Robert Gallo could have stolen uh, Montagnier's virus, even if there was such a virus. Because what Montagnier sent to Gallo was uh, um, supernatants from his cultures. And in the supernatants, the viruses don't last for too long. And in fact, the the, the particles have to have knobs on their, or spikes, on their surface to be infectious. And these knobs are lost. And in fact, nobody has proven that they exist. But even if they exist on HIV or the particles, they are lost very rapidly. So it is impossible for Montagnier's, for, uh, to have, for Gallo to have stolen a virus from Montagnier. So can you prove to me that HIV doesn't exist? I can, I can show you what the evidence shows, what, what Montagnier, for example, presented, because everybody accepts that Montagnier is the discoverer of HIV. And I can show you the evidence which Montagnier presented and claims to have proven the existence of HIV. And I will explain to you why Montagnier's evidence does not prove the existence of HIV. What do we mean by virus isolation or virus purification? Um, these are jargon words in virology and they, uh, they're not very precise. They mean different things to different people. Now, Dr. Gallo and Dr. Fauci talked a lot about isolation and purification. Can you tell me what the difference is between the two? Isolation, what was that? Isolation and purification. Of the virus? Yes. Yeah. Well, you isolate a virus by um, um, finding the virus which causes a disease. And you purify a virus by making a lot of, I mean, just by purifying it so you get a pure virus. Okay. I, don't, I don't understand what the issue Well, they, they, issue. Kept, they, they interchanged the two, and I wasn't sure I see. If, if it was the same thing or if it was two totally different. Uh, well, it depends on how they used it. Okay. 
Can, can you explain the process of HIV isolation? Well, I didn't Dr. Gallo do that? I mean, he actually isolated it, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why should I do all of this? This is all textbook stuff you're asking me. I'm not quite sure what's behind your question about isolation. I don't want to be your textbook, you know? Okay. I got other things to do. Isolation is essentially um, getting the, the virus from the patient and being able to transmit this virus to another cell to reproduce the infection and to have a continual supply of the virus, and that's called an isolation. Purification is just obtaining the virus uh, free of cellular contaminants or other contaminations, but it doesn't mean necessarily that the virus is infectious. Virus isolation, I would take to mean that uh, you take some infected material, like a, a blood sample uh, from someone who you uh, think or, or believe may have HIV infection, may already have symptoms of AIDS, and you try and grow the virus uh, from that blood sample. So you would put the blood sample into culture, you would stimulate the lymphocytes to proliferate with various growth factors or cytokines and you would harvest the virus from the, uh, the culture medium that you are growing it in. Uh, you would spin out the cells, um, separate the cells from the supernatants and you would look for the virus in the, uh, in the culture medium. That needn't be a pure medium because you can use markers of the virus that tell you it's there such as the reverse transcriptase enzyme. So you can see evidence of the virus without actually purifying particles. In that very first paper from the French group, published in May 1983, uh, there were two things that uh, uh, appeared to uh, class it amongst the retrovirus uh, uh, family. Uh, one was reverse transcriptase activity and one was actually looking at virus particles with the electron microscope. The title of the 1983 paper by Montagnier and his colleague is Isolation of a T-Lymphotropic Retrovirus from a Patient at Risk of Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, AIDS. Now, the word isolation means to obtain something or to place something apart or to obtain a, sep a substance separate from everything else. Apparently, Montagnier by isolation did not mean this, but something totally different. And I'll, I'll explain to what he meant by, by isolation. He did three main experiments. The first experiment, he took lymphocytes from a patient, now is known as Brew, and he cultured them with many uh, substances including PHA and other growth factors. What are growth factors? They are substances which make cell to multiply. Okay. Right? Or to live, and to, to, to stay alive in the culture. Mm -hmm. And after 15 days, he discovered their reverse transcriptase activity. And they claim that this proved the existence of a retrovirus in their patient, in their patient cells. So every two days we were taking the supernatant, looking for the presence of the enzyme that transform RNA to DNA, the reverse transcriptase, because we know that this enzyme is associated to virus particle. So we were testing for this enzyme activity in the supernatant. Uh, what's so special about reverse transcription? Uh, Any time you're searching for a new agent, you want to have some simple measurement of the presence of that agent. Um, in times past, you would put it on cells, cell culture in the laboratory, and suddenly these beautiful cells will all start turning into dead cells. You say, oh, something's there. And then you 
put that into an electron microscope and look and you can find it. All those are rather difficult things to use. If there's something that the virus produces in this culture, you don't necessarily have to see all the dead stuff. You just can have, take off some of the liquid it's growing in and test it. Um, and one thing you can test for a retrovirus is reverse transcriptase. And it just happens to be that's a laboratory test available for it. So you just take a little bit off, put it into a chemical assay, and you can do it very, very simply. So it's a matter of something that you can put a lot of specimens through and something that's simple to do so you can really uh, uh, get a, maybe not a direct picture of the virus, you can't see it, but you can get evidence that it is there, like fingerprints. Then he took the lymphocytes, which originated from bruised uh, lymph nodes, he took these lymphocytes and cultured them with the lymphocytes of a healthy blood donor. And there, again, he detected reverse transcriptase activity. So Montagnier did found reverse transcriptase activity. And according to him, this proved that the retrovirus was there. But the, the only way to say that the existence of reverse transcriptase or the detection of reverse transcriptase activity proves the retrovirus was there is only if reverse transcription was specific to retroviruses, which is not the case. In fact, the Today, nearly everybody accepts that reverse transcription or reverse transcription activity is non-specific to retroviruses. In fact, at present, everybody accepts that reverse transcript transcription is present in all normal cells. In fact, as far back as at the beginning of the 1970s, Gallo himself have shown that normal cells, when put in culture and they're stimulated or they're cultured with, PA, with PHA, they will start uh, mm, mm, having reverse transcriptase activity. Montagnier put the bruised cells in a culture. Into culture, he added different growth factors, including PHA. And after 15 days, he detected reverse transcriptase activity. However, PHA by itself in normal cell, and this was known by Baresinus, the principal author, and Gallo proved it at the beginning of the 1970s, that the PHA itself causes reverse transcription in normal cells. So he put something in the cell which was causing a reverse transcription, and yet he said that this proves the existence of a, of a retrovirus there. So you're saying that what they found might just be the actual substance they put in the culture and not a virus? Definitely. That is, that is, that is, is their evidence. And Why would they do that? But as you know, she knew that in 1973, Gallo proved it at the beginning, in 1972, I think, was his paper. I don't know. Now, everybody accepts that reverse transcriptase activity is a characteristic of retroviruses, but it's not specific to retroviruses. But in all my interviews with scientists, they all say that reverse transcription is unique to retroviruses, and that's how they knew that there was a virus in their culture. Once you um, have produced, you know, you produce something in the extracellular medium, you can do actually several things. One thing is that if we expect or suspect it's a retrovirus, like HTLV-1, the leukemia virus, what we can do is look for uh, what we call reverse transcriptase activity, the enzyme which is unique to these viruses.